Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, so I've been on KDE for, well, almost, well, a ridiculously long time now. I don't actually keep track of the amount of time that I'm on there, uh, but it's been a very long while. I am missing Hyperland, and I have been working on and off with Hyperland again with my dot .files. I had to correct a couple things. Let's talk about KDE. Yeah. Uh, so I had it die twice. Uh, the third time it didn't quite die, uh, something got corrupted, and I had to fix it the most simple way possible by going into dot .local share and literally just deleting uh, these two folders here. Well, not that one, just this one. Yeah, just this one. And that fixed the problem entirely. KDE is still iffy at best, but it's usable, which is nice. The other bug that I like, the fact that is enjoy that it's been fixed after like 15 some years has been the ability to just rapidly move icons. And then as you can see, it doesn't get lost anymore. But now for some reason we accidentally created that. That's fine. That's really cool. I enjoy that. And um, that makes using a dock much easier. The only thing I don't like is that the dock, one second, let me put this down here. Uh, it goes all weird like that. Docks don't lose their roundness when another window is in the way. It's kind of strange that it just pushes it down like that. What a dock would normally do is it would just be well, like it is without this window. See? But it just it pushes it down and it's annoying and I don't like it and I don't know how to fix it. Uh, I like how one person decided to complain to me that um, one second, let me, how do I, this is, we're editing this, right? Okay, so always visible. Uh, windows go below. Dodge windows? I don't know, is this it? One second, let me try this. So now, no. See, that's that's dumb. That defeats the entire purpose of a dock. All right, always visible. I don't know. It would be nice to just not have that happen uh, because, again, Mac OS doesn't do that. GNOME doesn't do that. Cosmic just expands the thing to the edge of the screen, which is definitely not a dock. That's more of a, a panel than anything. It's, uh, it, it's, it's annoying. But, you know, it's a thing. And what other bug was it? Oh, sometimes when I decide to go and, and change things, like if I went to add something in here, uh, what could happen is k would crash. But it would restart itself automatically, which I guess is completely fine. But it, it would crash, and that's annoying. And I don't like that at all. That just uh, that bugs me, you know? Ooh, margin separator. And it's like, hello? And I like, Is that there? Uh, hello? Can you please just, oh, you son of a bitch. You won't go on the dock. I thought you were made for the dock. No, okay, we gotta get rid of you. Go away. Yes. Remove yourself. I guess I can't put a margin separator there, but it would end up crashing and it would be hilarious because I like how everyone's like, it's the most stable thing ever. No, no, it's not. Okay, I want to try. I can't put you on a panel either. Oh, I could put you up there, but I can't put you down here. Uh, let's try this. Okay, we're going to put you there. I'm going to select you. Come with me. Are you... Oh, you're a hater. You're you're just you're just hating the fact that I have a dock. See, now I'm just mad. Because I would love if this just, you know, would do its thing. That would be great if I could just like put that down there. But it doesn't want to. It, it's okay with going here, right? But it doesn't want to go on the dock. And that's another thing. It's very constrained. Uh, I, I found this funny. People wanted to know how I pulled this off, and they were asking for it, and asking for it, and asking for it. But the minute I actually upload the video, it was dead silent the first day. It's like, nobody actually cared. And that was the first time I didn't get any comments on a video in ever 
until the next day, which is really strange. And you would think it's because, oh, time zones, but no, it doesn't. That's never been a thing before with any of my content. So it's funny that if I went and decided to do a video on GNOME, where I did GNOME like this and have everything set up and I show off the extensions, what to use, what not to use, what's good. Like if I modernized it uh, for GNOME 49, people would be all over it. They would be super interested. GNOME is just more popular than people like to let on. And KDE isn't as popular as people like to let on. I found this out and now I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, why did I put it in the video at all if no one really cares about it? Because if I put GNOME in there and I mentioned GNOME in the title, people freak out. They'd be like complaining, why'd you use GNOME? Why'd you use GNOME? And the minute I put in KDE, be like, what about GNOME? Can I do this on GNOME? Can I do this on on on, on, on Ubuntu? <laughs> How the tables have turned. All right. So I'm using um, a plugin or an extension or a widget or whatever called, is it a script? Better Blur. Okay. Better Blur is pretty cool because, again, it allows for Nautilus to look so goddamn fine. Uh, as you can see, like, look at that. That looks great. I love that. Also, it does the rounded corner stuff. It looks awesome. And I enjoy it. But it's got some bugs. And the bugs are that it makes the top bar flicker sometime. This is after KD decided to break for the third time. And I think it's maybe something with it, but I'm not really sure. It's kind of annoying, but it's not at the same time because it's like, why are you flickering? Like, I'm wondering why it's flickering. But again, the overall point of this video is that KD has been stable-ish so far, where it's not completely outright died where I couldn't bring it back because I know how to bring it back. I'll always know how to bring it back. That's the thing. I've run KDE for 24 plus some years. I'm not new to it. Uh, it's been annoying me for longer than any relationship I've ever been in. And it's changed, sure. But if anything ever goes wrong, that is not what I wanted to open. Uh, you just you open this up, you go into config, and I just wipe out half of the crap in here. Like, it's not hard to restart back to zero and then get this all done up. I mean, there you go. You got everything. It's not difficult. Mm, that's what I'm trying to say. But there are bugs. I'm not going to pretend there's not. And I'm hoping that one day... KDE developers, or developers will stop prioritizing useless new features that no one really asked for besides one, one tiny person and just do an entire release, 6.6, .6. please let it be 6.6, .6, where they just go through the last 20-something years of bugs and make sure every one of them's fixed. And if that fixing of that bug causes another bug, they fix that bug too. And they go like this until it's as stable as known. Because I could pack about 100 plus extensions on GNOME and it's still ridiculously more stable than what I have on KDE right now. The only advantage KDE has is its ability to blur things. And that's it. It's got nothing else going for it. it its HDR is meh. Just like GNOME 49's HDR is meh. It, it needs work. They all need work. They need to catch up with Hyperlint. I was gaming on HDR. Uh, earlier today with KDE and I'm looking at it and it's all blown out and it doesn't look right and you have this um, this ability to uh, what is it called run the HDR calibration tool or whatnot it doesn't really do much it doesn't really help because I still have to use the calibration inside the game to get it to work and to function and then you got this mess what the fuck is this what is this? Why is this here? Like the UX decisions that these people make are still ridiculous. Look at this. Why? Why is this a thing? Stop it. This is not okay. I don't... There's a user feedback. Hmm. I wonder if they actually look at user feedback because I might write up something uh, stating what needs to be done. Because I would love more than anything 
to be able to use KD and not say to myself, I wish I was dead inside. You know, because, like, uh, how about this? Give us the ability to turn all of this into, like, cool icons, like the old school days. Uh, if you ever saw the past versions of GNOME, I think, they, they had the ability to just, like, swap between list view and grid view for options and settings. I love that it scales. This is what I'm going for, the scaling ability in my own config. But this is what I'm trying to avoid because this is unnecessary. All right, stability wise, yay. UX wise, you need a lot of work, okay? And the fact that most of the bugs I had fixed in the old days are gone, I appreciate it, but you still got a lot of work to do. So, uh, I don't know. It's not like anybody ever really cares when I try to help to like do something, but let's try this. How about we all, those of us who use KDE, go into user feedback. Where the hell did it go? Right here. Oh. What the hell? It's not actually user feedback. It's basically just... Wow. That's not user feedback at all. They really need to take a, a page out of Apple's book. User feedback should basically be uh, the ability to click a button or open an application, add your email, do a sign up thing, right? Log in to whatever. And from your desktop, you have the ability to go type out if you have an issue or you have a suggested change or you need something added or if you want something cleaned up like this messy ass settings. That is real user feedback, but this is not user feedback. This is nowhere even remotely close. This is just information gathering. This is the type of stuff that people remove from Windows. I just didn't hit apply. You didn't see that. Another bug I am really, really glad they fixed is this. It's called the double apply. So if I end up like changing something, let's say uh, prefer color accuracy. Prefer, okay. If I go and change this to prefer efficiency and I go to exit, it doesn't ask me to apply twice. By the way, the colors now look horrible on that monitor, and I need to go back and fix this, because this actually does something. Uh, I'm not worried about efficiency. My computer's already efficient, as you'll ever get. Alright, so there we go. That's it in a nutshell. KDE is doing great. I'm still using it, and again, I want 6.6 .6 to be the pinnacle of bug fixes. I want them to go over the last god knows how many years, 24 plus something years, 28 something i don't know what's the actual number that they've been around because i've only been using them for about 24 years on and off they need to go back go through their bug list fix everything that is in there right confirm it's fixed make sure it hasn't caused any extra bugs if they have to build the discord get the like, community involved something come on i want to see you guys stable i want to not randomly log on one day and have everything broken you know i would love that that would be great I would not want to see something peg my friend's CPU at 100% when it shouldn't, right? There's multiple little issues and inconveniences that are going on. I don't want my Skittles to spill. Point being is, it needs some work, but it's getting there. And it took 20-something plus years to get there. And I just want them to get over the final hurdle. Am I repeating myself now? I have to. This is not a hate video on KDE. This is actually, I appreciate the work that they're doing. Someone's going to take it out of context. They always do. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share the video, put your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. It freaks me out when no one does it. I don't know why they didn't do it on that other video. Uh, I'm going to cover GNOME 49 and how to get all your extensions and stuff working uh, because I think that would be something you'd appreciate. Because GNOME 49 is currently in beta and most people think that extensions break. They don't. So I'm going to show you how to basically get them turned on again. Simplest way possible. Uh, and I'm going to do a GNOME setup video from base to something that is usable from a Windows interface to a Mac OS type interface. Okay. Bye everybody. Also, you can join members on YouTube. Apparently, YouTube says if I mention that enough times, people will actually join. It's a little join button down below. Uh, members, not all the time because people don't like when people, videos are hidden behind walls and stuff. You guys will get videos early. Like if I upload parts, you guys will get part one, two, and three. 
okay, why everyone else just gets part one, and the next day they get part two, and the next day they get part three. That's how I show my appreciation. Or I do a video like this, you guys will get it first, and then yada, yada, yada. I don't know. But the next video, members get it first, and then everyone's, everybody else will get it uh, the day after at 9 a.m. Appreciate all of you.